Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Wednesday, May 25th. According to documents posted on social media, Tesla has filed to enter the market in Thailand. Interestingly, they plan to sell not only electric vehicles, but also batteries and solar products. Tesla has filed for this registration, according to these documents that have been posted, and it's not exactly the most legitimate source, but it seems pretty good. While Tesla hasn't announced anything official yet, there are a few indicators that Tesla vehicles have been imported into Thailand by private owners. And while that's one factor that Tesla takes into account when considering to enter a new market, the Thailand market is actually pretty large. Back in 2020, the Thai police bought a fleet of Model 3 vehicles for patrol. Interestingly, the rumors state that Tesla also has registered to sell solar and battery products. This end of the claim does lend a little bit of suspicion to the claim in general. Tesla has started to release a new software update with a better range calculation, incorporating more environmental factors and the ability for media accounts to be linked to driver profiles. Really, the range calculator is especially important. Last month, it was spotted in the code of the software, but now it's going live. The release notes say, quote, Energy prediction for your route has been improved by incorporating forecasted crosswind, headwind, humidity, and ambient temperature when using online navigation. Now, Tesla has long been a leader in efficiency and long-range electric vehicles for a long time. But despite that, it still has issues when predicting energy consumption of a trip. Back in 2018, they made more metrics usable when calculating range, and now here we are getting a few more percentage points down to the finer point. It really comes in handy when each percentage point counts. And the smaller the increments, undoubtedly, the more work the Tesla team will have to put in. News has emerged that Lucid Motors has issued its second recall on the Air sedan. According to the automaker, the issue concerns a wired data connection to the instrument panel that may not have been secured properly. Electrek reached out to Lucid ourselves, and we received a statement, which reads in part, quote, Lucid is not aware of any instances when these components have failed in a vehicle or caused an interruption for the instrument display panel. For Lucid, the safety of our customers and their families is the highest priority, and we are working to resolve this issue as quickly as possible. Now, Lucid went on to clarify that this will affect 1,117 units, which, from our math, is almost all of them. Just over one year of being founded, EV startup called Jidu is on the cusp of officially unveiling the concept first vehicle. They call it the Robocar. Jidu's parent company is Baidu, the Chinese social tech conglomerate that we would compare to Google. They plan to unveil the car at an event called Robo Day. It was originally scheduled for April 18th, but the Beijing Auto Show was postponed the same week from COVID-19. But we now have a new date for the announcement on Robo Day, clearly hearkening to Tesla's event naming habits. When the Robo car arrives, it will sit upon Geely's Sustainable Experience Architecture platform and come with Baidu's autonomous driving technology. Johnson Matthey Battery Materials, a Canadian company that operates one of the only lithium-iron cathode production facilities in North America, has been acquired by Nano One. This is one of very few facilities producing the battery cells in North America, as the chemistry has been mostly limited to being produced in China. A transaction was announced for a total of $10.25 million and was rumored to be facilitated by a motivated seller. Quebec locals say that Johnson Materials has been looking to sell for some time. In today's community comment, a channel called True Persona says, The EV battery of a car is so heavy that it's equal to the weight of six adults. The U.S. government will surprisingly announce later that repair costs of roads and bridges have doubled because of the impact EVs have had on infrastructure. You know, I'm not quite sure where the doubling figure comes in terms of vehicle weight, but I'd be curious to know if road repairs spiked after SUVs were being subsidized by the U.S. government in decades past. I think that would be the most applicable comparison in terms of weight and road deterioration. In all reality, I really don't doubt for a moment that road taxes will increase, but that's mostly because I'm cynical of government spending. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.